Amen. Come on, give my sons a hand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank God for them. Hallelujah. Amen. Don't forget this is our conference week. Amen. Amen. So be, be in prayer. Get your Bibles out. Be in prayer for this week. Amen. And that God would grace us with his anointing and his power. Amen. To be great witnesses for him. Amen. I do have a title. Amen. The title of this message is called. Now I have two titles actually. So what you want to eat? <laughs> you got two titles. I'll be having by 10 messages, but so what you want to do? I got a message. I'm serious. Y'all think I'm kidding. I'm stirred with both, but let's see. One of them. Y'all think I'm kidding. I just trust the Holy Ghost anyway. Whatever's gonna happen, he's gonna give it to me anyway. But um, I got a message. Well, I think I do. I might, I might save this one. I'll save this message. Amen. Go to the book of Acts. This is called Evidence, Evidence of the Ruach. Ruach is the Hebrew word for spirit or breath. Say amen. We used to, we used to be real big on that years ago. Did y'all give my sons a hand? Did y'all? Yeah. Amen. Thank God for them. Amen. Thank you, son. Thank you, son. Turn whatever down. That's, that buzzing is going to bother. Uh, ever say evidence of the Ruach. Now, if you've been in church any length of time, I'm talking, well, I can't say church, Spiritfield Church, Apostolic Pentecostal Church. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Y'all done got so modern because y'all all theologians by Google, y'all Google theologians, that we used to have an understanding that you don't just say you have the Holy Spirit. You don't, you don't just say that. That had to be, uh, we used to talk about evidence. Evidence. Can you, can you provide substantiating evidence to prove it? Amen. So I'm going to talk about it today because um, I was listening to, um, I was listening to, um, no, no, actually there was a comment that was made on one of my videos, one of, the, one of my worship, when I was doing my morning worship. And the girl made a comment that I know Pastor Darby is not speaking in tongues. Those evil tongues. What she said. So I was very curious, not curious enough to contact her because I knew she was probably way out on some deep edge of the flat earth something that I knew it wouldn't have been beneficial, but it made me ponder. Then I began to listen to, um, I'm not going to tell you their name because then you'll go look them up. And, uh, but I began to listen to, I don't know if you call them Hotep Morris style people. And they begin to talk about our, that the white man, y'all know they say the white man, the white man has kept, all, has kept us away from my, from my original religion that we had, uh, that the Haitians still have, and that uh, some of the Africans still operate out of. And he called it voodoo. And I saw in Voodoo, where we get voodoo, hoodoo, that they can speak in tongues. So I said, Lord, <laughs> if they got, it reminds me of when Moses threw the snake down, threw the pole down, the turn to the serpent, and then the magicians of Pharaoh did it. I said, Lord, we got to have some kind of evidence so we know what they got ain't what we got. Because in the last days, everybody's going to be talking about a Christ, a Messiah, a Savior. 
and they're going to have a lot of lying wonders, meaning mimicking the gifts of the Holy Ghost. Did y'all hear what I said? Mimicking the gifts of the Spirit. Now, there are 12 gifts of the Spirit. I think there are more, but we know there's main 12. And we can see that witchcraft is mimicking it. They mimic the word of knowledge. They call it psychic. They mimic prophecy. They call it fortune telling. Talk back to me. Of course, I said they'll mimic tongues. They mimic healing. When they do demonic healing, it's just the demon move from one spot to the next spot. And you feel free in that spot, but you bound in another spot. That's what you get when you consult witches and witch doctors and voodoo people and all that and spell people. You will get a demon moving around. Say amen. So I said, Lord, we got to have some evidence that sets us apart because everybody's talking about the Ruach and the Spirit and, and you go to Baptist church, they get touched or screaming and holler. What do they got? Do y'all not want to talk about this? The Catholics got some type of spirit. Everybody got a spirit. That's why I'm very mindful when people say they spiritual because you must ask, what spirit are you of? Because we all spiritual because we're spirit beings. Say amen. amen. But I want to know what is your power source? What are you connected to? Because when you tell me what you connected to, I can begin to look at the evidence. So if you say you're connected to the Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus the Christ, then there are evidences that you can't fake. Because we're not talking about power, we're talking about fruit. Amen. Jesus said you judge a tree by the fruit. So if you fill with his, with his spirit, then you'll have evidences of the fruits. Is this too much? Come on, talk to me. Because I'm very mindful now, because we have so many people, and we have people following. I mean, I've got so many people calling and following, and I'm just trying to figure out what are all these people talking about with this mixture? I say most of them are 70 30. They may have 70% Christian foundation, 30% word, 30% off, 30% out there, 30% suspect mystery. And they'll say some stuff like, me and my wife was at the conference one day, and we were talking to a sister, and, and she was talking about, of course, you know, we know who we are as a people. We know we are Hebrews. We know, okay, yeah, we ain't getting into that today. But we were talking to her about that, and that's really all she wanted to talk about. And she had come to the conference. She was talking to us, and I'm like, okay. And then she said, you know, um, when we pray to the East, I said, wait a minute. <laughs> Bible reference. Holy Ghost, help me with a Bible. He said, it ain't in her. I said, so there's, she had 70 with some 30. And it was almost right. But how many of y'all know almost ain't it? It ain't it. You, the Bible says you can't have bitter water and sweet water come out of the same fountain. A tree bears fruit out of its own kind. A good tree won't bear good fruit and bitter fruit. Either the tree is bad, talk to me, or it's good. So we have an absolute God. Talk to me. So if you, because we are the information generation that is exposed to all levels of communication on a high level, you are constantly under communication all day long. As long as you got a phone, you are under the influence of communication constantly. You will be talking to people and they will be on their phone while you're talking to them. They can't stop checking Facebook, Snapchat, somebody called them, somebody text them. It's just constant. They are under communication. Say amen. We can get communication 24 hours a day. We can download communication out of the air. So we are a generation that is flooded with information, and that is a curse. Why is it a curse? 
because whenever you are flooded with too much, the Bible says a false balance, it's abomination. We got too much. The same way we live in excess, we have too much information. I know you think it ain't true because y'all said, them hotel people said, them Egypt people said, knowledge is king. No, it's not. It's not what you know is king. It's who you know that's king. Amen. Say amen. So we have OD'd on knowledge. The Bible was very specific when it said knowledge puffeth up, make it vain or proud. This is why knowledge won't save you. Amen. Say amen. amen. So we have a dilemma. Say a dilemma. A dilemma. Where we have, to, we have to now decipher people's correct knowledge but wrong spirit. That means they can say the right thing. Now you sisters know, y'all act like y'all don't know, but you know. The brother said the right thing, but he had the wrong spirit. He got you because he said the right thing. He just had the wrong, so can you get that concept? So people can actually be saying the right thing, but have the wrong spirit. Are you there? So what you should have did was use what the Bible says, discernment, which means understand what's behind the person. What is spirit is he coming in? Because if you would have seen that, you would have saw long teeth. <laughs> Say amen. And long claws behind the grandmama outfit. <laughs> but you fell for what he said, but never judged the spirit or the intent for which they came. Amen. So we have a job, the Bible says, just test every spirit to see whether it be of God. So every all my communication I receive, I'm testing it. I am a filter. I filter stuff. I don't just receive stuff. Everything I receive, I receive with my filter or my strainer, which gives me ability to filter out some impurities. Now, I can't help to receive stuff because I'm a human and I absorb information about what I see and what I hear. I'm going to receive stuff, but the goal is to filter it so I receive what is beneficial. Amen. Say my filter. my filter. Now my filter is the knowledge of the word of God. Talk to me. Amen. Say filter. Amen. Now, so let me get into this. What I say? Book of Acts. Did I say Acts? I could take y'all to Genesis first, but let's go to Genesis first. Genesis chapter uh, three. Are y'all there? You have to have high discernment. Come on, say high discernment. Because I preached a good message Wednesday. You ought to get that message. Uh, about your problem is witches. <laughs> it's a good message that you need to get because it's probably go along with that. You have to have high discernment. Say amen. amen. That means as a believer, you must have your antenna up at all times. You can't sleep on your antenna. Say amen. amen. Now, what I want to show you is that Satan, listen, listen how I say this. Y'all ready? Now, does the Bible say my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge? Amen. So that means, now, the knowledge he's talking about there is the knowledge about God. You can have knowledge about a lot of other stuff that won't profit you. So knowledge can destroy you if it's not the correct knowledge. You're there. Now, I'm going to show you in this book how knowledge destroys you. Now listen, I'm not saying be dumb. I'm saying study the right thing. Say study the right thing. Now Satan has put out false, I don't want to say false, I don't want to say call it truth, false facts. 
to distract you, to take you down a rabbit hole or a wormhole that's not going to lead to truth. Are you there? I'll, I'll help you. Can I help you a little bit? Every now and then, a new trend teaching comes out that has everybody literally passing around the Internet, and they somehow make it to me and tell me that if I don't teach this, then I'm not teaching the truth. And I'm trying to figure out, why do you think I study what the Internet say? I don't look for viral videos. I have a, the teacher inside of me. The Bible says once the Holy Spirit has come, you will have no need that a man should teach you because he shall lead you and guide you into all truth. Now, how does he lead? By a witness. See, if we never had the Bible, the Holy Spirit would witness what is true and what is not. That's how I stay out of stuff because I can hear it say, oh, the Holy Spirit says, that ain't me. That ain't, that ain't me. Go on, leave that alone. Because we're talking about evidences. Now, what was my, what was my first point? But, but, nah, what was I saying? Study the right thing. No, I had another point. Come on, y'all can talk. That don't sound right. <laughs> That's not my point, though. I had a point before that. I was talking about Genesis. <laughs> How knowledge can be deceptive. Y'all there. So what the enemy has done, he has flooded us. Come on, say flood. flood. He has flooded us with so much information that most people, discerner is weak or their filter is clogged. That's a better word. He's flooded us with so. Now, you know, if you take a, if, if, if you take a strainer and you uh, are trying to strain oil out of meat, ham, let's say hamburger, and you put it in there and you put it all in there at one time, even though the oil stopped running, there's still oil in the meat. You didn't get it all out. Why? Because the strainer has become clogged with the, with, with, with the flood of what you put in it. So the problem is he's flooded us in the last days with all types of knowledge, all types of religion, all types of understanding. So, and, and, and we're trying to filter it, but, we've, but we're into so much, our filter is clogged. And even though we're trying to get the bad out, we still have, we still have it in our, in, our, in our strain, in our filter. Talk, can y'all talk to me? So he's killing us with the flood of knowledge. Now this goes against what we learned because I remember hearing that knowledge is king. And what was, what was, there was another phrase about knowledge. Knowledge is power. Knowledge is power. Now I'm going to show you how this is not true. It's not what you know. It's who you know. Because you can have knowledge about the occult. You have knowledge about murder. Look at this. Y'all there? Genesis 3. Y'all there? 3 1. It says, Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, which yea, hath God said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the, of the fruit of the trees of the garden. Now, what is Satan doing to the woman? He's flooding her with knowledge. Did y'all, y'all there or not there? He's giving her more knowledge that God didn't give. The Bible says, have faith in God. No, the Bible says, faith come by hearing, hearing by. So if you're hearing a lot of other stuff, you're going to have faith for that. Too much other stuff will cause you to have faith for what you're hearing. That's why when you sit there and listen to lustful music constantly, you have faith for that. You study pornography, you're going to be a freak. You, your belief system is, is, your belief system is uh, developed by what you feed it. Talk to me. So God told, she had a word and it wasn't from actually God. Adam told her. Because she wasn't there. Adam told her, don't eat a tree, Right? That's the knowledge. Now, how many of y'all know that knowledge is purest truth? It's easily filtered. Goes through no problem. But Satan introduced more information that she had to filter. Talk to me. That you should not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said, and the woman said unto the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, which is not what God said, but of the fruit of the trees, which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, uh, eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. 
Are y'all there? Now, what did, now remember, what did God tell Adam about the tree? What did God, what did he say? No, he said, don't what? Do we got to go back? Let's go back. Go back to chapter 2. Look at verse 16. Y'all there? Come on, get there. Y'all there? I'm trying to show you how the flood of information will distort. That's a better word. Will distort what was originally said or originally intended. Talk to me. Look at this. He says now, 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of the evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. What did God tell Adam about the tree? Don't eat it. Did he say don't eat it? Okay, go back to verse chapter 3. Look at verse, verse 3, verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it. That's not what God said to Adam. This is added information. Talk to me. I'm trying to help y'all. I'm trying to show y'all why y'all so unstable, Amen. why you so confused, and why so much demonic activity is going on in your life, why you can't enter a relationship, you can't stay married, you can't stay with nobody. You ain't going to talk to me. I'm saying it. Why you can't raise your children right. You know why? Because you, I, you, have, you, have, you, have, you have flooded your life with information out of the curiosity of Eve to know. Instead of trusting God, godliness with contentment is great gain. Meaning just following Matthew 5 would have kept you on a straight and narrow. But you're like the man that, that, that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho. He's in the place of peace going somewhere else. Because he wasn't content with what he had. We got a whole breed of Christian that is confused and deceived now because they wasn't content just walking with Christ. They had to get something added to it. Say man, And that extra information has distorted the original intent. And now they don't know what their name is. They don't know how the Holy Ghost work. They don't know what name to be baptized. They don't know none of that. They don't even know if you're baptized. They don't even know if the church is real right. The Catholic Church have made everything up now. What happened? What happened? The, the influx of information has distorted the original intent. When the Bible says, seek ye first. The kingdom of God and all his righteousness, righteousness, right standing with God, government, and all these other things. Say things. What are those things? The things you desire. He said, you, you seek the kingdom, those things will be desired. So you get those things by seeking the kingdom. So you bypass seeking the kingdom to go after those things. You the man that went down from Jerusalem to Jericho looking for something you desire. Instead of being content seeking the kingdom and living right. And all the other stuff would have been, your husband would have been added. Y'all want to talk? Want to talk? All of this stuff is added as you seek the kingdom. But because of this prosperity, name it, claim it, get it now, God only wants you to be happy gospel, you think that if God don't do it in the time frame you gave him, you go seeking it. Oh, that's a good word. You go seeking it. And he never said seek desire. Don't, he didn't say seek to be famous. Seek to make somebody know your name. Seek a relationship. He didn't say seek anything. Seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness, which means his government, his order, his way of doing things. So, if, so wherever I go as a kingdom seeker, I always look for his government and his order. I want to know who's in charge. As a kingdom citizen, I live under order. Say amen. I preached a wonderful word in Baltimore about the timing and order of God. That when, see, Lord, I don't, want, I don't know if I want to get in there. I won't get back to my message. Are y'all there? All of your, before I formed you in your mother's belly, talk to me, I knew you. Can y'all get that concept? 
Can y'all get Jeremiah's concept that before you were here, he knew you? Can y'all get that? A lot of people can't handle that because they, for some reason, think they existed when they were born. That's an abortion talk. No, you were here before. Before I knew, before you was in your mother's belly, I knew you. Now, to know you, we had to have been around one another. This is just deductive reasoning. To know you, we had to be around each other, right? So I knew you. I knew who you were. I knew who you should be, right? That's why your parents, your parents could be the worst parents in the world. You, the reason why the Bible says honor them is because they was the vessel that God blessed you with to give you this flesh to get you the highest reward in, in, in the kingdom of heaven. This is why we're going to judge angels. Because being born of this flesh gives you even the, the angels say, man, we're trying to look in on what's happening with these people. We are ministers to them because to be born in this flesh was the highest love of God. Because this flesh is what gets you the rewards in the kingdom. Hey, y'all, can y'all handle what I'm saying? So why are you here? Because he loves you. Now, before I was here, if he knew me, I was somewhere. Talk to me. Come on, is this too much? So if I was somewhere, where was I? Can y'all think? Where were you before you were here? I had to be with him. Why? Because he knew me. Now, I'm not saying I had the form I got, but I definitely was an animated soul that knew him and he knew me. Right? Now, he allowed me to be born out of his love, out of his love to give me his highest gift. What is the highest gift that he could give anybody? What's the highest gift you can give anybody? Free, say choice. The highest gift he could give you is choice. The angels didn't have that choice. They were created to serve. You were created as a son. You, 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 you have a choice. Now, now when the angels disobey, they get judged immediately. But you as a son, when you disobey, you got time to repent, to get it right. The highest gift was choice. Oh, y'all, can y'all can y'all handle this? Come on, talk to me. That's why you are, that's why I can't understand why people don't praise God. You know I know why they don't praise God, because they don't understand what he gave them. You still think something about you was why you're you're so good or pretty or hurt or, or tough or smart. It's why you're here. You don't know he gave you 70 to 80 years to experience something that even angels don't know nothing about. The love of the Father was based upon your ability to reject him. Talk to me. That's why if you're in a relationship with somebody and you kind of control them, that's not love. Love is allowing them free, freedom. Are y'all there? Okay, let me go. Now, so my point was the woman. Y'all there? Now, so he says to the woman, or so the woman says, now after all this influx of information, what God originally said was distorted. Say amen. The influx of information, say introduced, he, listen, he introduced new information. This is the reason why when God judged them, what did God say to Adam? First thing he said to Adam, what did he say to Adam? When Adam said, I was afraid because I was naked. What he, he said, who, to, who gave you that information? Because that's not what I said. Have you ate of the tree? You've been listening to the enemy. That's why you coming to me with information that I didn't give you. Say amen. This is now the notice that the tree was called the tree of no, the tree of the knowledge. Come on, talk to me. It's the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Are y'all there? So 
what caused man to fall was the knowing. What caused man to fall was the knowledge. So after they sin, I'll prove it, what did the Most High tell them? What did he say to the angels? Get them out of the garden, lest they eat of the tree of life and they live forever with all of this knowledge of only good. That's not God's good, because good is the enemy of God. Good is God's enemy. That's why you always have the will of God, because you go after what's good. God has something called best. Is this too much? So, 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 so good is the good is man's good. The knowledge of man's good. And that's why God said, you know, men's good is like filthy rags. Are y'all there? So it's the knowledge of man's good and the knowledge of man's evil. So when you study of that tree or you partake, now every other religion is teaching from the tree of knowledge. Every other religion is teaching you from the tree of knowledge. And you get, that's why you can study these religions for 50 years and still not understand what you're studying. Because there's no depth. There's no, there's no bottom to knowledge. This is deeper than what y'all understand. There's no bottom. You don't believe me. If you go on the internet, you just type in something. You study it. You hit that button. You go there. 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 You hit that word. You go there. You hit that. You can do it forever. Because there's no depth or end to what you can know. So Satan knows I can keep them away from God with their curiosity to know stuff. So I introduce knowledge. Every culture in the pinnacle of their culture, they were, they, were, they were obsessed with knowing. The Bible says the Greeks, Paul said the Greeks were so bad that they would go up to Mars Hill and talk about an unknown God just because they wanted to hear something new every day. Look at the Egyptians. They had the book of the dead. This knowledge about stuff that didn't lead to life. So you can, listen, you cannot exhaust knowing. So what the Most High has to do in our broken vessel, our curious vessel, because, now, why do we want to know? Why are we obsessed with knowing? Talk to me. Come on. Why are we obsessed with knowing? Why are we obsessed with knowing? A teacher asks questions. Makes you think about it. Why are we obsessed with knowing? I'll tell you. Don't guess. I'll tell you. The reason we are obsessed with knowing is for self-preservation. Because I think the more I know, the more I'll be able to save my life or save myself. So the, so, so the wanting or the desire to know things, that's why you want to control people in relationships. Because you think if I know everything, then they can't hurt me. Say amen. So the desire to know is based upon uh, preserving myself. This is why Christ said, that's why God said you got to put them out. Because everything they're going to do after this is going to be to save themselves. Christ came and said that if a man wants to follow God, he must deny. Any man that seeks to save his life will lose his life. Because listen, listen, are y'all ready? Come on, come on, come on, are y'all ready? Why didn't God give us mortal eternal life in this body? Did y'all there? Can, can, now, I'm going to say something going to bless you, but I got to make sure y'all with me. Why did he give us, why didn't he just say, okay, now that you know me, you can live forever. Within this flesh, why didn't he give it to us? Why didn't he give it to us? Let me help you. If you were to live forever, you would have no love at all. 
death is a gift. That's why the Bible said, death, where is your sting? Death frees us from, frees us from this life. Think about right now, just think about, think about what I'm going to say. You never can die. It would be the worst. Have you ever seen those movies like they was, they was immortal and they just live and they was like they live, they outlive everybody, everybody. 500 years later, they still living and they got to the point, I just want to, you see, you want, you start, you want to you go. Why? Because without, 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 without death, without, fi without fi fi finality, there's no meaning. You would just accumulate knowledge. Are y'all there or not there? Come on, can y'all handle what I'm saying? Is this too much? Well, I'm gonna mess you up then, since it ain't too much. Look, look at this. Now look, look, so, so, come on. Say the influx of knowledge distorted the original intent. That is the first step of deception. I just told you how you get deceived. I, I said I just told you how you get deceived. The first step of being deceived is receiving something that distorts your original foundation. Because what Eve received from Satan made her question the foundation that she had of truth. Satan's job is to always make you question the truth of God, the truth of his word. Let me help you. Help some of y'all, have you ever been like something was wrong with you? You, know, you might have been sick and you prayed and you got better. And immediately your mind said, oh, that wasn't, that wasn't God. That was because that was you took that cold medicine. Why is your mind trying to reason out the faith you have in God? Because the natural order of a human, even forget Satan's temptation, the natural order of a human is to be natural. Natural, carnal, worldly, earthly, and not to think supernatural. So whenever some, even right now, I'm going to help you. Right now, if, right now, if some, if some flew through this room, I'm talking about levitated and flew through this room. Even though you looking at it, your mind was say, oh, it's a string, some has a Y on them. It's a, your mind going to reason it out. Because the natural order of us humans is to be natural. Are you there? That's why they were so offended at Christ, because they couldn't understand how he's doing. They got offended at the super. He made them have to change their thinking, their mind. And they thought they knew it all till he came. This is too much. Now, y'all there. Okay, now go back. Now, go back to Acts. So, so with the influx of all of the knowledge, how do we exist? Are y'all there? How do I stay saved? Come on, talk to me. Y'all at Acts 1? How do I stay saved if I got all this knowledge? Because remember, the, the goal of the knowledge is to, uh, is to flood me with so much that I, that, I, that I fail to filter or I, or I get overran with so much, so many other contrary thoughts. Say, man, yeah. that the original knowledge that I had be becomes distorted. Are y'all there? Go to y'all ask. Now say how, say how, how. do, do. I, I stay, stay saved? Stay. Glad you asked. Because I'm going to show you. Come on, this is a good teaching. This is basic stuff. I want to teach you something basic. Now, I had a message. I had a message I could have gave it to y'all today. The message was called the American Pharaoh Revival. A, that's why I didn't tell y'all the message. Because if I said that, y'all would say, oh, talk about that. No. <laughs> you need this. You need this. Because in order for me to teach that, you have to have this to know if what I'm saying about that is even true. Amen. Talk to me. Amen. Say this, this is what we need. What we need. See, my goal as a preacher is really not to be needed. So that you can discern for yourself. 
most preachers are trying to be needed, and that's why the people are so dumbed down. Because they can't think without somebody tell every day they got to go on somebody's blog and see what they thought and see what they posted and see what they Facebook said. They can't think for themselves. Why? Because they're not led by the spirit that leads us and guides us into all truth. So they're forever wondering, was that right? Was that decision right? Should I have done that? Should I have took that job? Should I have went that way? Should I have, uh, 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 should I have let them in my life? They forever wondering because they don't have the witness of the spirit. Talk to me a little bit. Come on, this is good teaching. This is the reason why I said years ago we had a saying that you could not tell us that you had the spirit because you could have just had knowledge of it without experiencing it. I had people, I remember years ago, people would come in the house of God and you would hear them speak in tongues and you would know in your spirit, that is not it. Well, how can you judge it? Because I got it. The spirit they say they got witness said, that's not me. The spirit testifies of Christ. So we can't just start grabbing stuff. We have to be taught, and then we have to have evidence. Are you there? So when these people that y'all run into all the time say, the Lord, I, oh, the Lord gave me a word for you, and, and I, the Lord showed me something, and I was praying for you, and the Lord, you need to begin to go into questionnaire. <laughs> Ask them, how did you receive that? What voice did you hear? Was it audible? How did you get this? Where did it come from? Was it a dream? I need to know. Because the more information I get about what you said, the more I can discern it and I can decide whether or not I'm going to allow that or I'm not. Say amen. So what I must do, the Bible says, listen to me, you know the, you know the fruit, you know the tree uh, by, the, by the fruit, right? So what I got to do is put your fruit aside and judge the tree. Look at the tree. Say amen. So you told me that the man I married is not the one God got for me. So I need to put that fruit aside and say, where your man? Because surely if you can hear from God for who I'm supposed to marry, you, you, should, know, you should have heard by now. So if I don't see the fruit, of what you said working in your life, yeah. I got to discount that. Amen. Say amen. amen. Talk to me. Amen. This is important. This is why some of y'all in trouble because you listening to people. You don't listen to the wrong thing. People that have no, uh, the Bible calls them novices, have no longevity in the faith. They ain't been through enough to understand how God speaks. Because your trials and tests clarifies the voice of God. Did y'all hear what I said? Your trials makes God's voice more clear because you heard him in the belly of the whale. He speaks more in the midst of the test than any other time. So the test causes you to... Uh, 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 to um, to become familiar Amen. with the voice of God. Yes, God speaks to people. Amen. If I got to argue that with you, leave. Amen. I'm not going to argue that. You just don't, you ain't, you ain't got the Holy Ghost, so you won't know. Amen. But when you got the Holy Ghost, you ain't got to be no prophet. Amen. You get an inward witness. A witness is an unction, a knowing on the inside that lets you know don't go that way. Many of our lives have been saved because of the witness that said don't go that way. God never speaks paragraphs. He'll usually speak a word. That's why the people say God talked to them all the time. I wonder what. Man, like they got a phone. I saw something online. This pastor said he was a prophet, 
and he told the people that he was talking to God on the phone for them. Now you see why I'm teaching this. Because somebody in the whole church, some, one person, should have said, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. God has never needed a telephone to talk to nobody. He ain't never needed no telephone. The, the prophet Elijah when the spirit of the most high wanted to speak to him, this is even before the New Testament, before they was filled with the Holy Ghost. When the spirit of the most high wanted to speak to him, he thundered, he earthquaked, wind blew, but the Bible says he spoke in a still, small voice. Still, quiet, peaceful, gentle voice. That's how he talks. It's not violent. It's not loud. That's why you got to get quiet enough to hear him. Is this, is this understandable? So yes, the Lord does speak. See, some of you all don't know. I ain't got time to teach y'all how you speak, but I'll, I'll give you a few pointers. If you're not filled with his spirit, with the evidence of speaking in other tongues, then he speaks through your conscience. You know that thing you got that's no, it means you know good from evil? He'll speak to that unless you have seared it by continuing to override the voice of God. If you keep overriding it, you won't, you won't have conviction in the area that you continue to override his voice in. Talk back to me. So like if the Lord say, here, I'm going to mess you up now. Open the door. I'm going to mess you up now. If the Lord say that, 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 uh, flee fornication, which is everything outside of marriage, biblical marriage, man and woman, I ain't talking about no jumping the broom or saying we married a common law wife because we've been together till you know. <laughs> Covenant marriage, then if you keep on, if you don't flee it, then you will lose conviction in that area. And once your conscience loses conviction, your mind will justify why this is all right for you. And you will say something like, that's just my friend. And everybody got something in their life that they overcoming. You saying that because your conscience is seared in that area. And that's a bad place to be because you're no longer convicted. Amen. Meaning that sin God can't hold against you because you no longer feel you need to repent. Amen. So he speaks all the time. Y'all don't want to hear him when he talks. Because y'all think he's going to give you lottery numbers. God don't do that. That's called divination. That's numerology. It's witchcraft. That's why the Bible said don't consult a witch. God don't give nobody no numbers. I don't care if they did hit the lottery. God didn't give numbers. God says I don't do evil. Neither do I tempt men with evil. He ain't going to give you no numbers if he say he don't. Why? Because have faith, trust in God. Just trust God. You're a prosper trusting God. Amen. I said it. Them, numer them number books you got are witchcraft. It's witchcraft. It's called numerology. It's the same. It's like horoscopes. Oh, there's another thing. See, you're trusting something other than God. For what? For guidance. If you trust something other than the spirit of God to guide you, you'll get a spirit guide. It's called, that's what they call it, your ancestors. It's a spirit guide. And a spirit guide is the devil. It's a demon. Is this helping you? It, I, I got to help you because a lot of them people that you think are spiritual and you don't see where the, what spirit they connected to, they got a spirit guide. And the reason why you know because the fruit of the spirit guide is their life will be totally dysfunctional. Because that demon ain't going to let their lives function. Y'all want any of what I'm saying? Amen. See, right there is the problem. Y'all see that? And I said the problem. See, we want to be spiritual. But we don't really want to hurt God. <laughs> and if you don't want to hurt God, then ain't nothing, ain't nothing but one voice left. Now, 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 now the God that we serve is not going to talk to you about nobody else. He's going to talk to you about you. 
Now, if you want to pray about baby daddy, he ain't going to say nothing about baby daddy. He can talk about you. This is why y'all don't talk to God for real, because y'all don't really want to hear God. You go find knowledge. Somebody, the Bible says in the last days, they're going to heap together teachers that will tickle their ears. Tell them what they want to hear. When you go to God in true prayer and consecration, and you start talking about baby daddy, he say, yeah, but he didn't rape you. You chose to, he's just a bum. You chose to lay down with a bum. That's God. That ain't, that ain't God. No, God, God, it's him. That ain't him. You no good. No, sir. That's not how the most high talk. Because when you go to God, why would he talk about somebody else? He talks to you about you. So under this anointing of the Holy Spirit, what you're feeling right now, the Holy Spirit is talking to you about you. Now, you can shrug it off because we all have that mechanism, and you can tell when they shrug it off, and I'm going to show you how they shrug it off. <laughs> that laugh means I know it's right, but I ain't going to change. So they <laughs> Amen. They ain't going to change. Because your conscience is seared in the area of your pleasure. That's why Satan fights us in our flesh because he makes us protect pleasure. And you fight for your pleasure. <sighs> I'm still talking about the spirit, but see how far, Elder, you see how far I got to go to teach to get to my point because you can't leave people out. Now what's happening now is the Holy Spirit is ministering to you. He's ministering to you. Because why would, I never understood, why would God get you to dress up. Okay, get up out of bed, dress up Sunday morning when you can really be asleep. You want some good sleep? Good sleep's on Sunday morning. I know. I'm a pastor. Many times I'll be like, shoot. I want to stay asleep. It's good sleep. The reason why it's good sleep is because of Satan really working on Sunday morning. He making you tired. You just, the bed just feels so comfortable. The bed grab you. Come here. The bed start making excuses. You know you ain't got no clothes. You ain't got nothing to wear. You got to do your hair. You know your hair nap. You ain't going to feel like combing it. He got all the bed talk to you on Sunday morning. Why would God have you get up out of the bed, put on clothes on a day you don't got to go to work? Come to his house, sit in this church at least two hours in this church, at least two hours. And then not talk to you about his issue with you. I never understood how we go to church expecting to be for God to agree with us. That's not what God does. When you come into a, with an, an, in some churches, he, that's what they do. But in an anointed church, where the pastor really preaches about the Holy Ghost, you, you start immediately hearing about, you start being convicted. As soon as you get into worship, then the worship get anointed, you, <sighs> better put my hands down. You start feeling like a hypocrite. That's what happened in worship. You feel like a hypocrite. You want to put your hands down because you, you know in your heart, I, I, I don't feel good enough. Because the Holy Spirit starts reminding you of what you did against God. Amen. Notice I said against God. You did it against God. The Holy Spirit reminds you and makes you put your hands down. Say amen. amen. When you sit down, the word goes forth and the Holy Spirit starts revealing like a light come on. You start seeing like stuff that, that makes you know, that causes you to know you ain't right with God. Why would he do that? If he didn't want to bring you closer to him. Why would he do that? He don't, he don't reveal you to you just to show you that he know you. He reveals you to you for you to see you. Remember the Bible says that what did, what did, what did the most high say to Adam? No, he said, where are you? Where are you? He was like, the word locate you. I know where you are. I said it for your benefit. God know where you are. He saw what you did, where you did it, who you did it with. This word is to make you see he saw. You can cut all the lights off. Pitch black. He saw. He's the all knowing. He saw that. 
Now the reason now, now the reason why the word is the way it is is because when he, conviction gives you the realization, he saw it. And he wants you to deal with it. Can I get done? I got to get done. Come on, let me get done. Y'all at Acts 1? I got to help you. You know what our problem? Can I, can I help y'all? I'm going to make y'all mad. I'm going to make you mad. You ready to be mad? Man, I'll make you mad right now. Our problem is black folks was the Baptist church. It was the Baptist church because the Baptists, they did believe in getting you saved. They got you saved every week. They preach salvation every week. But they didn't teach you what Paul taught about putting away the elementary teachings and going on to perfection. Meaning there are elementary things about God that you learn in elementary school. But the deeper things of God, you learn as you go on to perfection. So what they did do, they got you to come to Christ, reveal who he was, but they got you to receive his salvation, but not his benefits of righteousness. So you went in the church and thought, this is it. So you stopped. You never did understand that this was a beginning for a life of growth. This, this is a journey into holiness. Bringing, teaching you how to, how, to, how, to, how to cut off or renew your mind against your old ways to put on a new man to teach you how to please God. You ain't got to believe it. You know it's true. You went to church. You shook the hand. You got baptized. You, 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 they, you said the prayer. And that's as far as you went. And that night or the next night, you was right back into what you was into. Why? Because they only taught you just get Jesus. And that's all you need. When for some reason, the Christ they told you to get said there's another one coming. Y'all didn't catch that. There's another one coming. He's not going to only be with you. He's going to live. John the Baptist said, he shall not baptize you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. The fire part is the part that burns you out of your old life and purifies you to live your new life. But that's not done without the Holy Ghost. So we got in trouble because we got four, five, six generations of Baptist thinking. Well, all we needed was to go to church. Come on. What happened when you go to your grandmom and them and you say, I'm just going through so much. What she say? Baby, you need to get in. No, you need to get in church. As if church was going to help you. You go to church. Like, That's more hypocrites. I, I done got hit on more here than in the club. Why? Because you went somewhere where there's no Holy Ghost conviction. Amen. Say amen. amen. So going to church is just like anything else. You can go anywhere and not get help. The church is not a, 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 the medicine. You come to Christ and receive his spirit. And the spirit of God begins to do the work that you couldn't do in your flesh. See, you're trying to leave stuff alone out of your mind. That's mind over matter. That doesn't work. Eventually, that's a temporary fix. Once your will is no longer strong enough, you'll go back. But when we're filled with the Spirit, the Bible says that the Holy Spirit within in us lusted to envy. That in the time we are tempted, he gives us more grace to stand. What does that mean? That means when I'm about ready to fall into sin... It's no longer mind over matter. It's the Holy Spirit in me that gives me power at that point of my temptation to overcome. This ain't no mind trick. I ain't lived this. I ain't lived this long. Was living for God. This ain't no, now. If I wasn't living right, you you would have heard it. Can't keep nothing from little Louisville. This ain't no mind trick. Every day. Every day. We do what Paul says. Pray. Build, building up our most holy faith. 
praying in the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? That's what's keeping us. His spirit. You know, we used to say that he's a keeper. This generation don't even know he can't keep you. Why? They ain't got the spirit to keep him. Y'all, I'm going on. I'm going. I'm almost done. Get it done. I'm trying to help y'all why we got such an unstable in and out of church. Just don't know what they're coming. Can't jump, can't commit, can't be stable, can't go over here, get in this relationship, jump out of there, go over here, run over here. One minute they Muslim, one minute they in this. We had a girl say, she just she named every religion she been. I was like, Lord, look, I only know you just need some demons cast out. She done been in everything. She been in everything. Running around getting knowledge without the knower. Talk to me. Amen. Now listen, I gotta go. Can I go? Amen. Look at this. Jump down in book of Acts chapter 1. Look at verse 12. Y'all there? Come on, y'all there? Amen. Then returned they, talking about the apostles, the disciples, y'all there? This is after Christ rose, right? Are y'all there or not? Then they return unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went up into an upper room where abode, or where, where stayed both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, and Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, the son of Simon Zealots, and Judas, the brother of James. So the apostles went up into the upper room of a, I don't think it was a church, it might have been a house, but they went up in the upper room and they stayed there. Say amen. Because they were obeying Christ. Wait in Jerusalem till you be endued with power. Wait. This is how you get filled with the Holy Ghost. You wait. But it, the, Christ said, go in your prayer closet, wait before the Lord. Talk to him and wait on him. Say amen. amen. They wasn't running in the club seeking God. Got to cut off those illicit relationships when you're really seeking God. Y'all don't want to talk about this. You got to pray over your mouth to stop speaking all that crazy stuff that you're speaking because you're grieving the very spirit that wants to inhabit you. Talk to me. The waiting part is to get you alone enough so you can begin to purge out of those attitudes and mindsets that's keeping the most high from taking up true residence in your life. I said, wait upon the Lord those that wait upon the Lord shall renew have you waited no you wait for one day and then you're all fulfilling desire wait talk back to me these all continue with one accord in prayer so they went they was in the prayer meeting You know that thing y'all don't come through during the week? But say y'all seeking the Lord. Come prayer night, be crickets. Be our faithful few. You know why people don't, don't pray? Because they ain't really seeking the Lord. They ain't seeking to be filled with the Spirit. They just want the conscious, cleanse, good feeling, go back to their life. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary the mother of Jesus and his brethren in those, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said uh, the number of the names together were about 120. So you got 120 people praying on one accord. Say amen. amen. Praying, doing, waiting on the, what the Christ told them to wait on. So, so, so let me ask you a question. Were they saved? Yes. Were they saved? Why? All those who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But did they, would they have victory? No. Because right before this, what was Peter doing? Hiding and cussing. <laughs> that sounds like something. Hiding and cussing. What you doing? I'm just hiding and cussing. 
Why? Because he didn't have power. What, what power? Power to live right. Power over his flesh, his tongue, his mind. Because he, he was not yet filled with the power. Talk to me. Talk back to me a little bit more. So he said, look at it. He says, he says for number with us, oh no, what, what was talking about? Uh, and men and brethren, 16, this scripture must needs have been spoke, have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased a field. He's talking about Judas that betrayed Christ. Amen. Now, this, now, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity and falling headlong, burst asunder in the midst, and all his guts gushed out. This, this was his reward for betraying Christ. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem in so much as the field is called. Now, Peter's preaching. Y'all got that? Amen. Let's jump down. Are y'all there? Amen. Let's jump down. Let's go to, uh, let me just go on to the next chapter. Verse 1, Acts 2. Y'all there? I'm, I'm sorry, I said Acts 3. Act, it was Acts 1, and this is Acts 2. Y'all there? Amen. Acts 2. Y'all at Acts 2? Come on, I got to get, come on, y'all there? Y'all there? Yes. And when the day of Pentecost, what, what's Pentecost? What's Pentecost mean? What does this Pentecost mean? Pen, pent. F 50. Means 50. 50 days. Pentecost was 50 days. Now, 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 that told me something spiritually that you can't seek him a little bit of time. Fifty days was fully calm. They were all with one accord in one place and suddenly, say suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and it filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and it sat upon each of them and they were all, listen, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost because they said they was. Because their mama told them, you got it. Because they got a touch, start screaming, start falling out, snaking on the floor. The Baptist spiritual. Because they start crying, goosebumps. Felt something. Got emotional. The song... That's not what the Bible said. That wasn't filled. See, y'all putting all of it on these little external things. That's what it said. It said they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. Why didn't your Baptist pastor tell you that? Because he didn't have it. He didn't want you to have it. Because as soon as you'd have got it, you'd have been gone. Because you would have known. I've been sitting here this long, battling up in here, fronting like I'm right with God. Steady slipping and sliding, dipping and diving. Grady going in the front window, Freddie going out the back door. I said I wasn't going to mess with Grady or Freddie, now I'm touching myself. I said it, Amen. feeling guilty and convicted every time because you didn't tell me there was some power that I was supposed to get once I gave Christ my life. Amen. Say amen. amen. And the power has evidence. Amen. Evidence. The Bible says when you get filled with the Holy Ghost, there's evidences of speaking with other tongues. Now, other tongues is really not psychobabble. It's not. I'm going to prove it to you. Are y'all there? They were filled with other tongues. Look, verse 5, and there were in Jeru there were at Jeru there were dwelling at Jerusalem, Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this noise, 
Now, this, now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because, why were they confounded? Because every man heard them, talking about them disciples, speak in his own language. So this ain't Bible. It's not psycho Bible because when they was up there praying in tongues, the people outside say, I heard him because they all had come to all the people that came to Jerusalem because it was Pentecost. And they were saying, How do I hear? Oh, well, I'll read it. It's right here. Amen. Amen. Seven. And they were amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue? Wherein we were born, Parthians, Medes, Elamites, dwellers of, in Mesopotamia and in Judea, and Cappadocia and in Pontus and Asia, Phrygia. Look at what he's naming. These cats is up in the upper room. They all, that would, that would be like saying, all of us in here only speak one language, which is English. And all of a sudden, we get filled with the Holy Ghost, and you start speaking Spanish, and I start speaking French, and you start speaking Japanese. And people outside say, you speaking in my language. Amen. So being filled with the Spirit is not Babel. Amen. It's a language. Y'all didn't catch that. If I go deeper, I will show you that Pentecost was the revival of the unity that they had at the Tower of Babel. What did God do to, 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 to keep them from building that tower to heaven? He confused language. So no longer do we need a physical unity to come together and we all speak on one accord. We are now joined in the spirit that I could go to Africa and they could talk in a dialect I do not know. But because they got the same spirit that I got, we can communicate. We can get along because they got they, the, the spirit in them is going to witness to the spirit in me. So I might not understand what you say, but I know how to treat you. Y'all heard what I'm saying? So it's no longer need to be unified in the flesh. It's a unity in the spirit. That's why the Bible says, know no man after the flesh, but now know him by spirit. Y'all there? One more thing and I'm done. Can, you, can I give y'all one more thing? I know it's one o'clock. Can I give y'all one more thing? Y'all want one more thing or not? If you, if you don't want it, go downstairs. There's food down there. You go down there and eat. You can go down there and eat, and uh, we'll stay up here. Go over to, uh, let's see. Galatians, real quick, Galatians 5. I'm going to be done. Galatians 5. Come on, is this helping anybody? Yeah. Come on, you need to understand this stuff because, you know, people, you know, nowadays you got, the Bible says, try the spirit. See if it be a God. I want to know what, I want to know what your evidence is. Now, now, notice I said the evidence of them having the Holy Ghost was they were speaking other tongues. But you cannot, as a discerning Christian, Understanding witchcraft and voodoo, you cannot leave it on tongues. I'm going to tell you why. You don't understand Japanese or, so you wouldn't know what they're saying. Even Paul said that that's the reason why we don't come in. If some of y'all want to know why we don't get up talking in tongues, because Paul said if, if people come into church and all y'all are talking in tongues, they're going to think y'all crazy. That's what Paul said. They're going to turn around and walk out because they think y'all crazy. Speaking in tongues is really for uh, prayer. It's for yourself. It's really for prayer. You got what I'm saying. Now, I don't have time. I'll tell you what tongues is later. I don't have time to tell you now. But what I will tell you is you can't put it all on speaking in tongues. Why? Because Satan is a counterfeit. And he'll speak in tongues too. I've heard people do that. I've heard people do that. I've had people come in our church do that. Get the hard. Oh, wait a minute. Because, you know, all I'm doing is looking in my spirit. That ain't God. Elder, get her out. That ain't God. Get her out. Take her out. Take her downstairs till she come out of there. You ain't going to be, see, because you know, this is witchcraft stuff. You ain't going to say no curse up in here. With what are you saying? You start talking, no, speak no curse. I mean, you, can, you see, you got to be in this for a while. We, me and my wife ain't no novices. We 20 years doing this. We done seen all of the stuff. So I'm trying to teach thoroughly because you are the one that need to question stuff. Quit thinking because people go to church and they say they're spiritual. Most of y'all get messed up like that. Girl, he go to church. So the devil go to church. He's spiritual. Demons are spiritual. He know the Bible. Not better than Satan. 
You can't put it on no what they say. You judge it. The judge, that's how you be judged. It wasn't talking about that. Talking about judging your brother unjustly because you're a hypocrite. You in what he's in. That's what it means. If you're doing what he's doing, shut up. The Bible tells us to judge. We judge the household of faith. If they say they saved, you got a right to say evidences. Why? Because if I get mixed up with you, what's in your life comes in my life. So I got to make sure you are who you say you are. So I judge you. Say amen. Yes, judge it. Give me a Bible. What, what, what job did I say? I don't preach till my phone went off. Galatians 5. I know what. Galatians 5. We got back up. Y'all think I'm going to stop because no, sir. We got back up. I got five or six different ways to preach. Look at this. Galatians 5. I want to show you. 5. Look at verse. Come on, because you can't put it all on externals. She might have a big, big Bible, long dress to the floor. Don't put it on that. She may wear cotton stockings, her, you know, with no perm like they used to back in holdings. Don't put it on that. Don't put it on that. She might pray in a cross form on her forehead. Don't put it on that. Don't put it on no gifts or no miracles or nothing. Bible says Satan is going to have lying wonders in the last days. Y'all there? Look at verse. Oh, Lord, I don't even know how to. What, what? Give me a King James Bible. This ain't no King James Bible. That says something different than the Bible say. Yeah. All right, y'all Galatians. Come on, let me get done. Galatians, y'all there? Verse 5. Y'all verse 5? No, y'all chapter 5. Start at verse uh, 16. Are you there? Yes. Come on, come on. Are y'all there? Yes. For this I then, for this I say then, walk in the spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Amen. Walk in the spirit, Holy Ghost power, Amen. and you won't have to give in to this flesh. So if you give in to this flesh, it's because you didn't walk in the spirit, and if you don't want the spirit, then you rejected it. That's not what you want. Verse 16, 17. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Oh, I got to close. I don't have time to get this to y'all. That means that this flesh that's going to die and go back to the earth is lusting against the spirit. The spirit part was a part that got born again when you received Christ. Yeah. It's warring over the soul. The soul is your mind, your will, and emotions. Oh, I don't have time to break it down because you're a three-part being. So you have a, the flesh is fighting against the spirit for control of how you think, mind, will, and emotions, what you feel, and your decision, your, your decision making. You got what I'm saying? That's why you're always torn between, because there's a war with this flesh. Like right now, the flesh said, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. Once the flesh say that, your spirit, it starts warring with your mind. And you say, man, I was just going to take you to hurry up. Whew, he been, how long he going to go? I'm sorry, I even came. See, the, see the, the, the flesh is warring, so you're a blank out of the word. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You need to know that battle's going on at all times. Look, it says, uh, these are contrary, the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that you would. But if you are led, led, led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. This is the works of your flesh. These are the works you are doing if you're not filled and led by the Spirit. This is the stuff that you do. Are you ready? Adultery. Fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. You know how you ain't going to forgive that person? Hatred, variance, emulations. I mean, you want to be like the folks you see, like Beyonce and them and all these people. You want to be like them, look like them, dress like emulation. This is what to do when you ain't got the spirit. Because the spirit gives you who you are for real. 
You dress like the spirit tell you how you're supposed to be, not how they're telling you. Wrath, strife, seditious, heresies, envyings, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such the like, of which I tell you before, as I have also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But, y'all there. So you can't do all that stuff and say you're saved. It's telling you, if you're doing this stuff, you won't inherit the kingdom. Preachers didn't tell you, so they lied to you. That's why them preachers going to be in hell too, because they didn't tell the people the truth. You got to tell the people the truth to deliver your own soul if, if you're a preacher, because we are going to have the greater judgment. Because our job is to tell you, even if you hate us, we tell you. Even if it costs us, we tell you. We ain't preaching for your money. We tell you. If you never give another dime, I told you. Say amen. Now, verse 22, because you can't put it on tongues. Because you see people saying they got God and they're doing the stuff of the flesh. Talk to me. So what must you put it on? Verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love. You know that love? You ever felt that love is powerful? I remember when the Lord, when I first got filled with the Holy Ghost, the first thing I felt was an insatiable love. Folks, I hate it. I had compassion. You know what compassion is? Godly understanding of where they are. Did y'all hear what I said? In other words, instead of me saying, I'm just hating, I, 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 the, the, the spirit gave me understanding. Uh, they did that because this is where they are. You understand? It caused me to release them. Say love. See, if people ain't got love, see, the Bible says if you hate your brother, you're a murderer. And you know no murderer has, has eternal life. You don't have the spirit of God dwelling in you, when you, if, you if you hate folk. Because to the Lord, hatred is like murder. Come on. Love. Joy. You know, that happiness that's not predicated on whether I got or don't got, whether it's good or not, whether my circumstances is good or bad. I have this inner joy that the world didn't give and the world can't take it away. Peace. You know what people paying, getting hooked on opiates for? Peace. What that bipolar medicine and all that is? Peace. I got it for free. I got it for free. And ain't no side effects except love. Come on, long suffering. That's why you can't stay with nobody. The fruit of the spirit is staying in our long. How you gonna be married with no long suffering? Soon as they make you mad, you're ready to jump out of the relationship. You ain't got the fruit, but they say they got the Holy Ghost. Well, why can't you suffer long? Stop all that bada be the bada ba. Suffer long. That's how I know you got it. Quit calling her and saying you want to. Can, can I divorce? Well, no, you can't divorce. You don't ask me. God hate divorce. Now suffer. You suffer and pray till it change. Giving up ain't no fruit of the spirit. Come on, gentleness. Gentleness. That's fruit of the spirit. Not like a gentle person. You ever met a gentle person? I mean, even just being around them, they, they, you know, they touch is gentle. I ain't, that, well, I ain't talking about sex, it's sensual. Lord, let me clean that up. Don't be touching me. I mean, they, they have a, they have a, a, a gentleness. They're approachable. Are you there? Goodness. All around goodness. Faith. Look, believe in the word. Meekness, you know that faith they ain't always talking. I don't know if God's there or not. I don't know if you hear him or not. You ain't got the Holy Ghost. Meekness, humble, not proud, not dressing or alluring with pride. Say amen. Not, I mean, temperance. That meekness, not a braggart, like these rappers always talking about what they gonna do and who they gonna do and. What they got. Temperance. You know what temperance is? That means, that means not being sometimey. You know what sometime is? They woke up today happy 
in an hour, they be mad. The next hour, they happy. The next hour, they mad. You don't know, it's a roller coaster. Temperance means set the temperature, put it on 68, and leave it. That means, that means tomorrow, they the same person. A little bit later, they the same. You know the worst thing is to be with somebody and you don't know how they gonna be tomorrow. You spend your whole life, I didn't mean it, I'm sorry, I didn't wanna do it, I'm sorry, because you, no! You got no temperance. Uh, listen, listen, listen. Against such, there is no law. You can't be convicted when you're operating out of this. And they that are Christ, oh God, have crucified the flesh with the affections and lust. So if we live in the spirit, let us, let us also walk in the spirit. Did y'all hear that? Did y'all hear what I said? I'm done. I'm done right there. And they that are Christ, they that belong to Christ, I ain't got to argue with your doctrine to know who you are. They that belong to Christ have crucified the flesh. I mean, put the flesh down. Don't live no more out of it. It doesn't dictate what I do. If the flesh says hungry, shut up. Paul said I buffet my body. It means I talk to it. The body said I'm tired. I ain't going. Get up. You are going. Why? Because I'm crucified. I'm going against my own flesh. The flesh say, I just want to cuss them out. Shut up. Shut your mouth. Fight it. Why? Because you crucified. Every time you deny this flesh, you're showing Christ that you love him more. Stand on your feet. Takes courage in this. To go against your own self. All them impulses you've been living out of your whole life. That's what it means to be saved. It means we deny this flesh. I deny my lust. We ain't robots. I didn't say we don't feel it. We just don't give in to it. Oh, that's biblical. The Bible says even Christ was tempted with every point, yet without sin. He never gave in to it. So it can be done. He's our example. You ain't got to do it because it's there. The Bible says a man's will is always with him. He's always in control of himself. Say amen. Just because, just because the booty's right there don't mean you got to look at it. Y'all heard what I said. Just because he called you don't mean you got to call him back. Change your number. Unfriend a lot of people. Get down to the folks that encourage you to live for God. You won't live this life without crucifying this flesh. This flesh is the dirtiest. Oh, it's so dirty what it do to you. Ain't there something that a flesh would just be, be wanting to do wrong and wanting to do wrong? And you will hear the flesh just, just telling you to do wrong and setting it up to do wrong. And it just sounds so, and you be mad, but it sounds so good. Flesh telling you all the good things. And soon as you do wrong, the flesh say, I ain't saying nothing else. The flesh leave you with your own condemnation. Then you be feeling bad. The flesh say, I ain't got nothing to say. I did my job. You fed me. You gave me what I wanted. So you, so really a, a real Christian looks at this flesh as part of the enemy. Flesh is the enemy. You got to learn that about yourself. The, the, I showed y'all what the works of the flesh are. The flesh desires adultery. The flesh desires the murder. The flesh desires envy. The flesh desires strife. That's why Paul said, I no longer owe my flesh anything. I no longer live out of my flesh. I live out of my spirit. And I tell my flesh what to do. You tell this flesh what to do. That's why you will never fast until you tell your flesh, shut up. Shut up. You ain't hungry. Shut up. You keep on talking, I'm going to fast longer. Y'all don't think, this flesh is alive. It loves this world. It loves food. It loves pleasure. It loves sex. It loves the forbidden because it was created out of this fallen world and it goes back to it. That's why you don't carry this flesh out of this life. The Bible says this flesh drops to the ground and Christ has another body for you. This flesh is part of this world. So you have to learn how to live. Come on, say live. live. 
by the Spirit. Ain't that good? Hallelujah. Come on, lift your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to pray. I, I know it's late. We're going to pray because I feel led to, come on, son. I feel led to pray even salvation today because I felt that, that conviction of the Holy Ghost. Oh, listen, listen, listen. Never be mad when you're convicted. Thank God that he loved me. You could have died in your sin. You could have died. Look at all the people just dying. And you could have been one of them. But God was faithful to even make you offended enough to tell you the truth to save your life. You thank God for his conviction. When I think of how he could have, all the stupid stuff I did, all the dr drug dealing and craziness and gunshots and robbery, all stuff I did, and he could, I, I could have died any day. But he was faithful. Because he knew that deep in me, I wanted to serve him, but I was too bound by his flesh. I was too bound. So he gave me a way out. So the conviction you're feeling is grace, it's mercy. It's him saying, I love you, that I brought you to a place where you will hear the truth. So you would talk to me about the stuff that's going to keep you away from me. Your, 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 your home never was hell. I prepared a place for you that where I go, you can go too. But you got to choose ye this day who you will serve. And if you serve me, serve me with your whole heart. Play. So we're going to pray. Bow your heads. Hallelujah.